Welcome to Medifaction. Today we will learn about the anatomy of mammary gland. The mammary gland is an exocrine gland in humans and other mammals that produces milk to feed young offspring. In this video, we will be learning about an introduction about mammary gland, its situation and extent, its deep relations and also structure which divides into skin, parenchyma and stroma. We will also learn about the blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage and some important clinical anatomy. The breast or mammary gland is the most important structure present in the pectoral region. The breast is found in both sexes, but it is rudimentary in the male. It is well developed in the female after puberty. It forms an important accessory organ of the female reproductive system and provides nutrition to the newborn in the form of milk. Situation and Extent The breast lies in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. It is divided into four quadrants that is upper medial, upper lateral, lower medial and lower lateral. A small extension of the upper lateral quadrant as we can see right here is called the axillary tail of spence which passes through an opening in the deep fascia and lies in the axilla. The opening is called foramen of Langer. Vertically it extends from second to the sixth rib. Second to the sixth rib. And horizontally it extends from the lateral border of the sternum to the mid axillary line right here. Deep relations. The deep surface of the breast is related to the following structure in that order. Number one, the breast lies on the deep fascia or the pectoral fascia covering the pectoralis major. Here, you can appreciate pectoralis major. Still deeper, there are the parts of three muscles, namely the pectoralis major right here, the serratus anterior right here and the external oblique muscle of the abdomen which can be appreciated right here. The breast is separated from the pectoral fascia by loose areolar tissue called the retromammary space. This right here is the retromammary space. Because of the presence of this loose tissue, the normal breast can be moved freely over the pectoralis major. Structure of the breast the structure of the breast may be conveniently studied by dividing it into skin, the parenchyma and the stroma. Let's learn in detail. Skin. It covers the gland and presents the following features. Number 1. A conical projection called the nipple is present just below the center of the breast at the level of 4th intercostal space 10 cm from the midline. The nipple is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts. This right here is the lactiferous ducts. It contains circular and longitudinal smooth muscle fibers which can make the nipple stiff or flatten it respectively. It has a few modified sweat and sebaceous glands. It is rich in nerve supply and has many sensory and organs at the termination of nerve fibers. Number 2. The skin surrounding the base of the nipple is pigmented and forms a circular area called the areola. 
This region is rich in modified sebaceous glands, particularly at its outer margin. These become enlarged during pregnancy and lactation to form rice tubercles of Montgomery. Oily secretions of these glands lubricate the nipple and areola as well and it prevents them from cracking during lactation. Apart from sebaceous glands, the areola also contains some sweat glands and accessory mammary glands. The skin of the areola and nipple is devoid of hair and there is no fat subjacent to it. Below the areola lies lactiferous sinus. This right here is the lactiferous sinus where stored milk is seen. Next is parenchyma. It is a compound tubular alveolar gland which secretes milk. The gland consists of 15 to 20 lobes. This right here is the lobes which are in 15 to 20 in numbers. Each lobe is a cluster of alveoli and is drained by lactiferous duct. So this is the alveoli and this one right here is the lactiferous ducts. The lactiferous ducts converge towards the nipple and opens on it. Near its termination, each duct has a dilation called lactiferous sinus. This right here, this dilation is known as lactiferous sinus. Alveolar epithelium is cuboidal in the resting phase and columnar during lactation. In distended alveoli, the cells may appear cuboidal due to stretching, but they are much larger than those in the resting phase. The smaller ducts are lined by columnar epithelium, the larger ducts by two or more layers of cell, and the terminal parts of the lactiferous ducts by stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. The passage of the milk from the alveoli into and along the ducts right here is facilitated by contraction of myoepitheliocytes which are found both around the alveoli and around the ducts lying between the epithelium and the basement membrane. Next one is stroma. It forms the supporting framework of the gland. It is partly fibrous and partly fatty. This right here is the fatty stroma. The fibrous stroma forms septa known as the suspensory ligaments of Cooper. This right here is the suspensory ligament of Cooper which anchor the skin and the gland to the pectoral fascia. The fatty stroma forms the main bulk of the gland. It is distributed all over the breast except beneath the areola and nipple. Now let's move on to the blood supply of mammary gland. The mammary gland is extremely vascular. It is supplied by branches of the following arteries. Number 1 internal thoracic artery which is a branch of the subclavian artery through its perforating branches number two the lateral thoracic superior thoracic and acromiothoracic branches of the axillary artery number three lateral branches of the posterior intercostal arteries the arteries converge on the breast and are distributed from the anterior surface. The posterior surface is relatively avascular. The veins follow the arteries. They first converge towards the base of the nipple where they form an anastomotic venous circle from where veins run in superficial and deep sets. The superficial veins drain into the internal thoracic vein and into the 
superficial veins of the lower part of the neck. The deep veins drains into the axillary and posterior intercostal veins. Right here is the axillary artery and here we can appreciate the superior thoracic artery, the acromiothoracic artery and right here is the lateral thoracic artery. And these are nothing but the branches from the posterior intercostal artery. These are the perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery. This part is known as the areola and this is the nipple. Now let's learn about the nerve supply. The breast is supplied by the anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of the 4th to 6th intercostal nerves. The nerves convey sensory fibers to the skin and autonomic fibers to smooth muscle and to the blood vessels. The nerves do not control the secretion of milk. Lymphatic drainage Lymph from the breast drains into the following lymph nodes. Number 1. The axillary lymph nodes, chiefly the anterior or pectoral group, the posterior, lateral, central and apical groups of the nodes receive lymph from the breast either directly or indirectly. The internal mammary nodes which lie along the internal thoracic vessels. Number 3. Some limb from the breast also reaches the supraclavicular nodes, the cephalic node, the posterior intercostal nodes, the subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal lymph plexus. So, these are the diagrammatic representation of the lymph nodes. This right here is the supraclavicular, this is the apical lymph node, this is the anterior axillary, this is the central axillary, this is the lateral axillary and this right here is the posterior axillary. Clinical Anatomy Number 1. Incisions of the breast are usually made radially to avoid cutting of the lactiferous ducts. Number 2. Cancer cells may infiltrate the suspensory ligaments. Hence, the breast becomes fixed and contraction of the ligaments can cause retraction of the skin. Number 3. Infiltration of lactiferous ducts and their consequent fibrosis can cause retraction of the nipple. Obstruction of superficial lymph vessels by cancer cells may produce edema of the skin which give rise to an appearance like that of the skin of an orange. Just like this. Number 5. Because of communications of the superficial lymphatics of the breast across the midline, cancer may spread from one breast to the other. Number 6. Because of communications of the lymph vessels with those in abdomen, cancer of the breast may spread to the liver and cancer cells may drop into pelvis producing secondaries there. Number 7. Apart from the lymphatics, cancer may spread through the segmental veins. In this connection, it is important to know that the veins draining the breast communicate with the vertebral venous plexus of veins. Through these communications, cancer can spread to the vertebra and also to the brain. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.